RV. Stuff for your blog so. Lord, if they only do them nights, dirt to burn candles by the dust to guide me so fire. Share energy, release to melt the hot mind. Star boys, come on to wax you. Yeah. Relax, I rest and less and dress in the cold episode slowly. Watch we all skin the spring to suffer. So hard, so do what's life got to offer. You stay curious, they analyze the facts. Who's there to encourage, give a panel they back. How come side people wanna go and ignore? Or do you think team never work as a chore? I adore each step, hop, skip, cadence. Travel this thing in the age of decadence. Do this irreverence to the older veterans. Stripe to the chest, plus a chip of a shoulder. Street soldiers cut without severance, but you keep hustling in any ways for the elders. Way better because it's just like all the native concentrated cultures that are already in the milk, but people keep using up the better buttermilk for other stuff. So yeah. Start saving a jar. So. What is kefir? Kefir is milk uh, cultured with. A kefir grain scoby, um, which is like culture that's been like passed on for over a thousand years. Mesophilic and thermophilic bacteria in there, and then also the fungi and yeasts you need to age make rinds of cheeses. Okay. So it's like a multi purpose um, colony of microorganisms. That's the scoby. Okay. So I'll just like take it off and rinse it off and put it in the next batch of milk. So the scoby just grows and grows and grows. Cool. And you okay. just reuse it. It's like a, it's kind of like a pet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is off. So yeah, pretty much it's like waiting for that to culture. 45 minutes, I'll come back and add the rennet. And we'll check the temp and Basically, the ideal temperature for rennet is 90 degrees. So if I go too far above that, I'll like wait for it to cool down. But it's at about 100. So if I add the rennet now, it'll just curd up way faster. Okay. It's fine. Yeah, I just mix it back in, and, and you kind of want it mixed evenly before you add the rennet, so that it, like gets evenly mixed throughout all the layers rather than having like the fat separated from the rest of it. This is the rennet that I've already dissolved in here. You just dissolve it in water and then you just sprinkle it over the milk. And then, uh, you mix it for a couple, I usually mix it for a couple seconds using an up and down motion because you don't want the milk to swirl too much. Because that'll get in the way of the curds forming. Or so I've read. Like a film of of whey coming over here. See the whey is like on top of this? Yeah. That's the way. Yep. The way is the yellow stuff and if it's like nice and clear and then this is like nice and white, that's what you want. Okay. So it kind of looks like yogurty or whatever. Yeah. It's not a hard curd yet, um, but that's where you want to start cutting it. So I'm going to get the giant machete and we'll cut the curds. I usually turn it up because I'm going to end up bringing the curds up to 100 degrees to cook them. 100, 102 or something. Oh, okay. So, and that makes the curds like, like if you squish these now, they would just break apart. Yeah. Or whatever, and cooking them pushes the whey out of the curds and make a, make some like cheese curds. Like you can push on them, they won't break apart, and if you melt them, if you heat them up, they'll melt. Okay. So, pretty much just use a grid pattern and try to cut them to like no bigger than half an inch. Quickly or start mixing them. 
them too soon, they'll just break apart more than you want them to. So I like pour the whey off in here and I'll put the curds in a colander and it'll sit over the hot whey for a couple hours and release more whey and get like a cheddar flavor. Now I'm just start stirring up the curds and breaking up the ones that didn't get broken up by the knife. This is pretty much all the liquid is whey. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. I mean, a little bit of cream usually gets pushed out. Like, um, I usually put like the fresh, freshest pail of milk in here so that the cheese has like some amount of fat in it. But once the cream separates, it just will come out in the way if you keep it in the cheese. So I'll skim all of the pails except for the newest one. Do you pull from like the bottom constantly, or do you kind of? Go I to try to. Areas? Yeah, I try to because it gets um like the walls of the kettle are the hottest, so that stuff will start cooking way faster. Guess I could use a spoon, but I like the hands-on approach. <laughs> yeah, it probably goes faster too. Yeah, and I kind of more able to keep track of the texture of the curds. The texture? Mm-hmm. Like how breakable and soft they are. Yeah. Like this is like not ready to come out of the way. Like pretty much when we're close to done, they'll look like balls of melted cheese clumped together. Once I'm like satisfied with cutting them all to relative size, I'll probably close this and let it sit for another 10 or 15 minutes and come back to it are almost the same instructions but the difference in temperature of like culturing them and cooking the curds because <clears throat> like different bacterias or cultures thrive at different temperatures so when you're using like the kefir culture or whatever you bring it to a certain temperature it'll like a certain set of bacteria will thrive in that temperature range and give you a certain cheese harder the cheese you're making the higher temperature you cook the curds at, um, because ultimately it'll end up drier and more compact once you press it. Like a Parmesan, you cook at a way higher temperature than a cheddar. Scoop together in like a melty thing, although some of the curds are still soft, but you can see it looks more like stretchy, melty cheese. If you touch it, it's more springy than yogurt-like. But I'll still find these bigger soft curds in there, so pretty much wanna get those broken up so it all looks like a melty mass of curds. Draining them through into here. Let's see. Unfortunately when they're like still oh yeah, that was definitely cream that we lost. Which is okay. Stir them off of the grate because they like melt to it and clog it up a little bit. Eventually, I'll put all the weigh in buckets and that'll get fit out to pigs. Just wanted to put the colander on there without them getting sitting in the the steam comes up and flavors gives more flavor to the cheese i stopped doing that for a while and was just straight going into the press and the flavor became like way more bland when i wasn't doing it this way so i went back to keeping it over the hot pot away for a while before i put it in the form they're not quite cooked as much as i want them to be which isn't that big a deal for eating but uh, for pressing cheese if you don't cook them long enough, when you go to press your cheese, a lot of whey will be trapped in the middle. And when you take your cheese out of the press, it'll basically fall apart. Because there's too much moisture stuck in the middle of the cheese when you start drying it from the outside. Okay. And that's happened to me a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm cooking my curds a little longer than I used to know how 
and I'll just let this sit in here for like probably another 10 minutes at least. Just melted cheese. It'll stick together a lot more. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain the rest of the way out and salt it. Pretty much just eye the salt and taste the curds after I mix it in. What does the salt do exactly? Um, I mean, it helps preserve the cheese. Okay. Um, but also pushes more of the way out. Yeah, like a lot more comes out once you mix the salt in. Oh, yeah, I see. I mean, it just makes a better flavor cheese, too. That's pretty much it. For now. Right. pretty much go and like rip the curds up back into pieces so it will like release more of the whey. Just mangle them up. Drop them in the form. It does end up kind of melting into a giant thing. See the whey kind of trapped in there. And uh, and it should still press nicely because it's nice and warm sitting over the way. So you want to basically have it dry out slowly and evenly so that your wheel doesn't crack. And then you just flip it over as it's drying so that the whey doesn't like go all to one side of the cheese wheel. And then I just lay the cheesecloth over it. As evenly as I can. even top side. Lay it in there. Press the curds down. And we have like weights, but a gallon of water works as a weight as well. So I'll let that press for 15 minutes and then I'll take it out and flip it in the cheesecloth, put it back in on the other side for 15 minutes. Once it looks like solid on and neat on both sides, I'll put a much heavier weight on it for about 12 hours. Okay. And then it air dries for two to three days. We'll just wipe it up. It'll be all right. Get it out of there. Yeah, it's a little lopsided. I have to figure out a way to even it out, huh? I don't do it. Okay, you want to unwrap it? Let's make a nice even spot for it. Alright, ready? There we go. Perfect. Let's go. Yep, now we gotta wrap it back up. I do. Okay. You wanna get rid of as many wrinkles as you can. There? I did. Okay, you did. Perfect. Perfect. Well, close enough. Ready? This. Yoink. You want to put this in there? Okay. Go ahead. Put it in the bucket. Good job. This bucket on top of it. In the morning time, we should have a nice, even cheese. What I'm going to do. It's getting too hot for me to leave this out all night because I can tell it's like um, even that fire it's making eyes in the cheese. Yeah. It's so warm. The next one I'm probably not going to leave out overnight anymore. If they dry out too fast, they tend to crack and then it'll all dry out. Just throw it in the walk in and the bucket. 
a little bit once a day or whatever. Yeah, cool. And then it'll end up looking like the one that's in there. First thing that's down, down. First they first dropped to sweat my appetite But could it satisfy my craving for beats rap tight Like a Christmas gift this night Is an eve of a generation to live Live life like a testimony Simple rhymes a difficult time To help a friend do a lonely Tell them I didn't never remain just a funnel Into a wine bottle and cold inside it That's just so mind buckling a puzzle The maze of the grace never reached the goal Not twice in the gate it can reach a soul Numb themselves, shine right the altar One, all the apology Better to hold the sun for the